All right, everyone, welcome back to Dental Things. Today's concept is we are gonna be going over the act of placing a dental liner. In a situation where we'd use the die cal, like we have here, usually a decay is detected. After that, the decay is removed and die cal is placed in the deepest area where a filling is placed over it and we wait a while before the dentin does its job and irritates the pulp to move just a little bit away from our area. In some cases, we have a buffet of materials that you can choose from and also different styles that we may choose from that we are going to be going over today. The material that we have here for our liner is called calcium hydroxide, also known as DICAL, or Calcimol or Life by other brands. Calcium hydroxide promotes the growth of secondary dentin, usually done when we have a pulp cap or indirect pulp cap procedure when the nerve moves gently away from the area. So, when we go and look at the different choices that we have here, we mainly look at something that's different between all of them. Well, mainly that's gonna be like their color. Whether they are blue and red cap, or they are black caps with different colored tubes, they only tend to play well with their partner. With the different dental material that we're using, the main thing that you're looking for is right here at the edge. Some of them are gonna be called a base, some of them are gonna be called catalyst, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they are of the same brand such as right now we're using DICAL and that is of the brand Dentsply. And so we don't want to go and cross contaminate using my base from DICAL over with my Calcimol Catalyst. They are just not going to jive together. With our different dental materials, some things that we can also use is one of these that are called Limelight. And with Limelight, it has a nice special characteristic where instead of it being a two paste system, it is going to be one syringable material that we can go and add a cap to and place it very tactfully that allows us to syringe it right into the area that we want it to be. With that, that comes to the most important part, which is going to be our tooth in general. With that, we have a molar right here, and it has been prepared and cut out where the cavity has been removed, and it has this small little scoop out area where the tooth decay went deeper in this portion than the other regions that we have here. And so our DICAL, or calcium hydroxide, is going to be placed right here in the deepest area of this tooth as a dot in this dead center. This little helpful tool is called a DICAL applicator. The wonderful thing about the DICAL applicator is that it's a small little tip of a working end that it has is awesome at putting this material on the floor of the tooth where it's the deepest and instead of on all the wall area of the actual prep. So out of all my materials right now, I'm going to choose our most standard common one that's out there, which is this DICAL. But with the same situation, if you just go and take your caps off, make sure that you remember which cap goes to which so you don't mix the internals of the caps with the rest of the materials we can go ahead and dispense it onto our mixing pad. Making sure that it's equal in size. Now I have way more than I need, but this is to mainly show you how to mix it and what to look out for. But you notice that we have two separate colors that when we mix it together, should just be one. And so with that, I can go and take my spatula and just mix it together. The nice thing about this is that it's a pretty easy mix. About 10 seconds to do the whole thing, pass it off to Doc, and about 60 seconds after application in the mouth for it to dry up. And now that we have it all mixed perfectly, homogenous, one single color, now we're gonna go ahead and I like to turn my mixing pad and scoop up in layers so I have a nice glob to hand off. Now I can grab my tool, my Dalkai applicator, my explorer, or my ball burnisher, whatever you're choosing is. And with that, I'm gonna take my tool, I'm gonna put a small dot right in the dead center. We want it placed on the floors, not on the walls. Of course, whenever we're working with dental materials, we don't want to leave any material on our spatula once we are done with it. Make sure you always have a nice alcohol 2x2 or something nearby so you can go and wipe the material off and be done with it. Just as I have here, nice and clean for the sterilization to not have to work any harder than they already do. And same thing with your application instrument. Go ahead and give that a nice smear and wipe. Put that off to the side. With the mixing of our die cal material, it generally takes about 10 seconds or so to get it mixed, whipped, collected, and passed to dock or for yourself to place. Now, when it comes to how long it takes before it sets, usually for materials like this, if they're under our normal conditions of the office, about a minute before it becomes firm enough so that we can go and do our next step, our next phase of our materials, which would be more liners, bases, cements, temporary filling, or, per or permanent filling materials, whatever the choices that we are gonna go with. Another material we have access to is limelight. From there, we could just take it in its syringe, place a small dot at the bottom on the floor, like we did before, and then we go over and inspect. 
And from there, go ahead and take in the easy decision of getting our light cure and hitting it with our light cure so that it's fully cured and hard to go to the next portion. No waiting involved or extra materials that are needed. Apart from using our calcium hydroxide in whichever form that you like, the doc might also prefer to use a little bit of glass ionomer, which may come in a powder and liquid form that we can go and dispense, mix, and place as a liner also. Same factor as far as doing a little dot, we might make it a small layer at the bottom of the prep that could help with, for one, insulating pr properties or for sensitivity properties. Since glass ionomer has a beautiful thing of having fluoride releasing capabilities, the fluoride helps to soothe the tooth after this deep cavity is done. Another nice thing about glass ionomer for in general is depending on which one that you get, you can use it as a liner, a base, a temporary filling material, a cement, and the list goes on and on with the capabilities that this is able to do. But what it doesn't do specifically is promote the growth of secondary dentin. These different systems have their beneficial properties and times to use them. And apart from that, if you want to see more about glass ionomer and when we could use it and further mixing styles, go ahead and look for the video about bases and cements and you'll more likely see this one show up also. Apart from that, take it easy.